Hello. <laughs> so I'd like to welcome Katie. Um, she's going to be talking to us about baby wearing today. Katie, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, I'm obviously Katie. <laughs> um, I live in Early. Um, I well, I run Wear My Baby Reading. Um, I'm also um, uh, obviously qualified baby wearing consultant, and I have a wrap company called Jack and Rose. Lovely. Um, and I'm Tessa. I'll just introduce myself in case there's people that know Katie that are watching this. I'm a yoga teacher at Reading and Caversham, and I specialise in pregnancy and mother and baby yoga. I do birth preparation workshops. So a lot of mums that come to my classes are really interested in slings. But when I was pregnant, I found that it was a whole new world. I didn't really know anything about slings. I was given a baby Bjorn um, and wasn't quite sure what to do with it and whether it was a good one to use. Um, so I'm, I'm really pleased to be talking to Katie today. If she can give us some tips for expectant parents as they begin to think about using a, a sling. So well, at first, of, yeah. Why I, because there's so much around and, and so many different carriers and so many different types and people are actually sort of saying, you know, how do you use them? So that's why I really felt there was a need for it. Mm. Anyway. Yeah. So can you tell me a little bit about your own journey with using slings and kind of how it led you to become a consultant? I mean, when I had my daughter nine years ago, really not many people were using carriers or, or I couldn't find anybody that was using them. So I was really struggling. I really did want to carry. Um, I was sort of given a family down baby Bjorn carrier. but tried it, but it just didn't seem to work for me. Um, second time around when I had my son six years ago, um, I really, really passionately wanted to sort of carry him because it just felt like the right thing to do. And I wanted to hold him, but just have something to support me. So I actually found a local uh, sling sort of meet that was happening. And I went along and obviously tried a few carriers and I was really sort of amazed at how, you know, it felt so comfortable and easy to carry him and obviously free up my hands to help with my daughter as well. Um, and that sort of started my whole journey of baby wearing. I sort of fell quickly into loving the woven wraps, so that was what I actually my children, well, my son. And then when I became a childminder, I really found they were so useful, so I'd have three children to look after, so um, having a wrap just enabled me to sort of free up my hands to hold one baby close to me and then obviously hold the hands of the other two children. Um, so I childminded for three years, and during that time I entered a competition um, to design a woven wrap, and I actually won oh, the competition. Wow. <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> well, I think I really started off the idea of uh, setting up a rap company. I thought, well, if I can design and win something like that in a big competition. So I ended up setting up my own rap company, Jack and Rays, and named after my two children, uh, Rory, Jack, and Emily Rays. And then from there, I then trained to be a baby wearing consultant um, because it sort of obviously tied in to have that professional um, qualification to show that I can actually teach baby wearing. But when I was doing my training, I realised how much I really enjoyed teaching other people. Mm -hmm. So that's when I, um, I became part of the Wear My Baby groups. And I obviously operate in Wear My Baby Reading, but we have Wear My Baby set up in London. Lots of different consultants all over London. So, um, yeah, and that's how I then started the consultancy, to help other people. And I've seen you in action when we've been at mother care events. And uh, yours is an, always a very popular store. So I think yeah. you're a natural... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so but if an expectant parent is thinking about using a sling are there some top things that they should be thinking about in terms of safety yeah so um we have uh, sort of some guidelines that we always um, go through and i do a consultation um it's called the ticks mm. rule safety guidelines for baby so if baby wearing the TICS is an acronym, and what we're thinking today, if we run through just quickly the things we look for, um, so T for, obviously the start of the word TICS, stands for tight, so basically you want to make sure that the carrier is nice and tight and snug to your body. One thing I would suggest parents do is obviously once you've got the carrier on you and you've tightened it all up, if you just want to check, check you can hold your hand to your baby and just lean forward. If you feel the baby moving your way, then you can't. Mm -hmm. Letter tips acronyms I. 
So that's eyes um, in view at all times. So you want to make sure that you can see your baby's face to ensure that they've got clear airway. So you look down, and as long as you can see your baby's face, then you can see that their airways are not compromised. Mm -hmm. um, here's close enough to kiss. So you want to be able to kiss the top of your head, uh, the head of the baby. So that shows that the positioning is correct, obviously leaning down to, to kiss the top of the head. Um, some people, you know, if they don't get the baby position right, they can wear them too low. So this is a really good way to just double check that you've got the baby at the right height. And obviously it means you can constantly monitor your baby. Mm -hmm. And A, which is keeping the chin off the chest. What that means is you want to be able to put your finger close to the baby's chin and make sure that it's off their chest. And that prevents them from slumping down and again compromising their legs. And then the last one, S, is supported back. So you basically want to ensure that the baby's back is supported in the natural position of the baby. So you see obviously this baby doll, <laughs> the demo doll, is actually newborn. So with that, it's sort of like a lazy J back to front. Yeah. Um, but obviously as the baby grows, the, the development of the spine will actually obviously slightly straighten and then have the natural curving as the baby gets older. So you want to maintain the, the natural spine, spine shape. So yeah, that's what you're doing. That's the, the things that you always check. We actually, um, I can just show you one second. I, I believe um, you're going to put a, a link to this, but this right. is sort of a, a summary of it. So um, this is what we always give out at the end of the uh, course as well, just as a reminder for parents to mm -hmm. use those, those letters to help them remember what to do. And I think when, um, when I see babies out and about with their mums, that thing about kissing the baby's head, if it's a newborn, it looks like the baby's really high up on the parent. Um, I don't quite always realise, they sort of imagine the baby will be a bit lower down, but they really are high up, aren't they? I mean, it's normally sort of like the natural position that you hold a baby and when yeah. you're holding it together. Yeah. Especially young big dads, because they're so much broader and bigger, they tend to automatically put them a bit lower, but obviously I'm still going to them to be as sort of high as they can really but it doesn't mean that their waistbands are actually usually quite high and then their natural thing is to put them quite low on the hips so oh. <laughs> it's quite, an, a quite a strange sort of idea to have you see the waistband up so high but as the baby grows you know their body length will actually lengthen so although you're keeping your body your baby's head close to the kiss you will just actually lower the waist come down to a yeah. for that and with your baby doll, I can see that the legs are in a sort of froggy shape. Yeah, so this is the natural position, again, that you want to maintain. And it's, the, it's an M shape, so you see that the knees are higher than the bottom. So it sort of goes M. And that's something we also cover in terms of ensuring that you've got the position of the knees up higher than the bottom. And that's to maintain a healthy hip um, position. So it's, it's for... You know, optimal growth to keep the hips of book to in that particular way. Um, I, I was born in Kenya and my mum talks about how there she would see the mums put the baby on their backs and of course they have the same M position. Yeah, on the back. Yeah, and the material wraps around their legs in that position. So <laughs> they wear them quite low because of the way the fabric comes around underneath the body. We um, tend to wear a lot of well, I mean, you can help it in different ways when you're using weight and that's really tight in, any, in lots of different carries in different ways. But um, because the fabric's coming over the shoulder, the babies are worn a lot higher. But you can still wear the back as in the torso carry, so there are different options. Obviously not for newborns. <laughs> um, you won't be using in back carries until they can actually eat from a sit on um, Yeah. Needing sort of any um, head support, so around six months, that kind of age. Mm -hmm. So with all the different slings that are out there, how, how does somebody go about beginning to choose one? <laughs> well, it's really difficult because obviously um, not every thing is every body shape. Um, it's kind of a bit like a pair of shoes, you know, you have to try it before you buy. So that's kind of why you know, I'm there to, uh, um, to service people, that they can come to me or I can come to their house. I can bring a range of different things and carry something which you can put them on either with their baby or with one of the demo dolls. And these are actually weighted demo dolls, so you do get a good feel of what the skin feel like. Um, mm -hmm. It's also, if there are two people looking to carry them, um, it's good to get both of them to try them as well because they will also have different body shapes. So yeah. it's fine if there's a skin that can work with both people. Mm -hmm. And then you've also got the baby. I mean, baby, you know, 
Mm. so if you're carrying your your child for a while i mean you might go through two or three different slings or can you really find one that kind of works carriers out there that actually now are designed to be one from birth or that's just before half five years old if you wish to carry your child for that long although the majority of them are sort of from birth to around a year and a half to two years mm. on weight rather than age or size of baby because you know you can't say all two-year-olds are a certain size or weight so yes yeah, they're, they're actually done on weight as a maximum mm. um and then as you say yeah, after that you then need to progress onto a, a slightly larger area, say like mm. a preschool or a preschool area. So really what you're looking for is your to fit the baby from the knee to the knee. Oh, and okay. That's a good indication. If your baby is sort of hanging down and the leg and the weight from the carrier and you're not getting support from the knee, that's what you need to be looking for a bit mm. And from your point of view, if you have an expectant mum who is thinking that she probably will use a sling, what, what would be the best time to start contacting you while she's still pregnant or once the baby's arrived? I do actually for some mums who are pregnant and we actually um, go through you know, the different carriers. It can be a little bit difficult to fit a carrier if you have a very large bump because obviously the carrier will sort of be pushed up slightly, but we can do it, but obviously we're just very careful fitting around bumps. Um, obviously it's really great also once the baby has just arrived um, I do often see mums and dads often in the sort of maternity leave and paternity leave kind of window right. about two weeks in because that way um, you can actually fit it to your baby as well because as I said, you know, babies are different sizes as well. Um, so yeah, I sort of get to see quite a lot of newborns. It's really lovely. <laughs> um, but also, you know, I can meet mums before they've given birth um, mm. or just soon after really is when, when you actually think, oh yeah, I could do with it something to help me really because so it's parenting aid mm. you, know, it's sort of, you know it's great babies want to be here this is the best place for a baby you can put them in the term they can hear you, you can listen to your heartbeat and feel secure and safe and we can do that with our arms but after a while sometimes you can get sort of a little bit stiff and uncomfortable just by holding so yeah. carrier just use up your hands <laughs> uh, so you can do a bit of washing up or tidying or <laughs> <laughs> too much work, but you know, even if it's just to sit down on the sofa, have a little glass of water, you know, and you just free your hand up, you can probably your baby and everything else you can get through. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, like you say, or going out for a walk and just being able to sort of relax, hold your partner's hand, or, or just you know, know that they're safe, you can always put some music down the sea, and it just sort of gives you that reassurance. Yeah. yeah, that's lovely. Thank you so much for giving us an insight. Um, because as I say, when I, when I was pregnant with my first child, I, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't really know where to start. So um, I, I used a sling with both of mine and it, it made a huge difference. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Is there anything else you wanted to kind of say about it that you really want to get across to parents? Just, yeah, just definitely consider it as an option. I mean, don't think you have to just be a baby wearer or, or just... Mm. You use both. Um, there are times when it's really nice to, be able to put paper down as well. So you know, just think of it as sort of like options. So when you're out and about, you might take your sling with you and your pushchair, and sort of have the option to use both. I think that's a really key thing. Yeah, yeah I agree with that. <laughs> yes. Well, we'll put the links down below for the the handout and the um, Katie's website, so you can get more information. Thank you so much. Say goodbye for now. <laughs>